All right, guys, we're 24 hours away from the Bitcoin halving. Some of the regular viewers understand that the macro cycle doesn't change so much day to day. The macro of environment remains relatively the same. Most new investors, they look for different news every single day to explain a particular type of move that's happening in the market. I know I was there when I first started trying to figure out why did the market go up today, but yesterday it went down and seemingly it was basically the same sort of news or the same sort of environment. So I'm going to get into that in today's video, plus also looking at cryptocurrencies, the strong and the weak. That's been a particular topic that you guys have asked for, especially at this time in Bitcoin and crypto as we start to, I guess, fish for a low. Now, I did say in yesterday's video, or at least the title suggested, that the low could take months. And I haven't changed my view on this. The lows definitely could take months. But we have to understand that there are, what, 2 million different cryptocurrencies. Obviously, Bitcoin is the king. It leads the market as we go up. But as the market comes down, you typically see some of these cryptos come down a little sooner. Now, of course, as always, I'm going to go through the traditional markets, our S&P 500, our NASDAQ, as they've continued to fall overnight. We've got several days down and I want to go through some timing here so you can get an understanding of, I guess, where we sit in the cycle. Very briefly before I get into Bitcoin, of course, as we've seen a nice little bounce here. Now, I have been going through without the clickbait looking thumbnails and uh, titles here. Thank you very much. Yesterday's video dropped in the views, but at least we got 4,000 likes. So you guys are still enjoying this type of content. I know I bring it up every video, but it's a pretty decent or big job to try and beat the YouTube audience where they want to see these faces and warning signs in the titles. It works. I don't want to go down that path if I don't have to. So thank you very much. Here we are, 24 hours to go for the Bitcoin halving. This is going to occur at 11 a.m. Saturday morning in uh, my time. Hopefully I'm not out surfing. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your weekends as well. We were promised $80,000 Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to pump into the halving. It's going to pump out of the halving. Everyone's missed out. This thing has got so much more to go. Although I still believe the macro cycle has more to go. It's really important not to get caught up in that hype. It happens every single time. It's almost like a fighting battle that I've got to go through on the channel and it gets pretty draining, but you know, I've got your support here as well to explain that these narratives, they, they have time where they go up and they have time where they just disappear. So no matter how much you try and say, it has to go up because the ETFs, it has to go up because there's going to be half the amount of supply coming in. It doesn't matter. It just matters in relation to the cycle. Where are we sitting? Have people gotten really uh, worn out with the greed and have they now become more fearful or have they gotten worn out of the fear and they're starting to get a little more greedy or they're, you know, they're starting to buy up. And that's just the nature of the cycles. It's when the market gets overbought and when it gets oversold. So we've got 24 hours to go. I, I doubt there is almost anyone that thinks it's going to get to hundred grand now by the, the halving. That was essentially the big talk of it. What for the last couple of months, February and March, it was, it's going to get there. It's going to get there. And we didn't even get to $80,000. Anyway, I think we're going to get there eventually, but it might take a bit of time. And that's what I want to look at as well in terms of the, uh, the timing, fishing for this little low, and then get into those cryptos as I have promised all week. So interest rates, traditional finance, let's get into that. Just briefly cover it. Not much has changed here. So we don't need to go into great detail. If you want further detail, go back and review those videos. Otherwise, continue to hit the subscribe and I'll, I'll update it in future ones. The main point here, as you can see from the top, some people didn't know how to read this, which is absolutely fine. This is your interest rate at the top, and this is the chance of a cut or a pause. This is the current interest rate. Looks like we're going to be paused for a few more meetings. And what we've seen is the, uh, the market and the probabilities shift to more pauses and sometimes even an interest rate hike. How is that uh, affecting our markets? Um, right here. We're just seeing it basically grind. It seems like the market is trying to digest this move. They're trying to figure out what's going to happen if we don't see any cuts. And maybe even if we see an interest rate rise, as I just uh, skipped through here, this is from the Fed's uh, Kashakari, fill me in down below. Once inflation is headed back to 2%, the Fed can cut. So what if we don't head back to 2% with inflation, then they can't cut, then they have to keep raising. That might be 
what happens this time around? Who knows, right? I don't, I'm not the Fed, but what we could see is that the majority we're thinking we're going to get cuts all throughout 2024 didn't happen. And it's basically back to where we started. Well, it hasn't moved at all. So that has now led to the stock market finally figuring it out, or at least some of the um, the traders and investors there thinking that, oh, this is going to get bad and markets are going to start collapsing from this point. We've seen a correction. And when you zoom out, that seems like a normal correction so far. You have to see corrections in the market. That's typical of any sort of move up. And this is really interesting. Check this out. Okay. We've got the 5.7% drop. It's the biggest drop we've seen so far. It's coming towards the 50%. We've gone through overbalance in time and price. So potentially this is going to be a little bit of a longer grind as we've looked at with the seasonality here. Essentially, these months will typically show some sort of grind. Doesn't mean it's going to be a massive collapse. Doesn't mean it's going to be a massive pump, but the price is going to basically range trade until we get out of this slump and then start to, to move higher. None of that has been confirmed or denied yet. So the, the, the points are all still valid. Let's just keep watching what the market tells us and figure out what the masses all have uh, agreements on. Like they all thought that the interest rates were going to get cut. And of course that didn't happen. So where we uh, sit now, all pretty healthy sort of corrections. We, we dragged this 50% out. We've still got levels back down to the previous old all time high, which was 4,800 points. And that swing low there at roughly 47. So there's still plenty of room to move to the downside. Should that occur, what percentage would that be? That would be a roughly 12%. So I've talked many times about probably somewhere around the single digit corrections. Um, that's obviously still in play, 5.7. The thing I wanted to show you next, however, is look at the move out of the COVID low. So I'm on a, a weekly chart here to the previous old all time high. And let's bring that all the way to where we currently sit now. This is on a weekly chart. And I mean, it doesn't take a genius to see how it's very similar that has been playing out over the course of this move out of the October low. And that's a pretty fast move. Remember what we saw out of the, oct the uh, COVID crash, that move to the upside. So things are looking well. I mean, I'm not going to follow this to a T, but it's been working out relatively well to cover that same sort of pattern that happened out of that COVID crash. Now, this shows up that there is a, potentially another a week down. If I move this around, you can see that there was another uh, week there if we take the same sort of timing. If we look at that timing in terms of weeks, now that would take us out to one, two, three, about three and a half weeks to the downside. Uh, what the S&P has done previously, you can see it's done three weeks to the downside, then has a, a bounce, another few weeks to the downside, another bounce, another couple of weeks there. This is one of the longer moves, so that's about 13 weeks, and then the market skyrocketed from that point. The previous move into the uh, banking crisis was uh, six weeks. We had a small correction here, final dump, and then it came out of that move. And then into your October, or well, basically the October, the bear market bottom, you had eight weeks as well. So we're not halfway yet. We're about two and a half weeks into it. So keep an eye out for somewhere around that sort of four to eight weeks. I know there's a 13 here, but let's see what happens after this sort of around that four to eight weeks for some sort of move to the downside. This one here, I'll come back to later, but if you do want to follow X, this is fantastic advice from 158 comments here on X about what is one massive lesson you wish someone had drilled into you before you had to learn it the hard way. That is gold. A lot of it is very similar to what people have said here. A big one, patience. A big one, take profits. We'll come back later, but if you want to read that yourself, the link to my X is in the video description. Go and check that out, one of the most recent posts. So on to Bitcoin, and then I'm going to get into those altcoins. BTC, yesterday we had the down day, took out the lows here of March and April, still just above the 5th of March. So 59K remains at the bottom there. Basically, the low is still in at 59K. But I've got in the title Bitcoin to 53K, maybe around halving, maybe after halving, whatever that is. The, the main thing I wanted to bring up about that is that I saw a lot of comments from people saying that they're waiting for 50 grand or 53 grand to enter. I just point out, what if Bitcoin doesn't get to that price? As I've said many times before, I don't know if Bitcoin will get to that price. I don't know exactly what happens on the black side of the chart. We just look at the probabilities and then try to stack it in our favor and get positioned 
right for the next stage of the market. So far, things have been pretty good. All of those bearish signals have played out. There was the fake out here. I'm going to get rid of these now so we don't have to keep looking at them day after day. We had the failure at 50%. We had the three days down signal, which is still in play. And all this stuff started to show up relatively early in the piece when everyone else was super uh, bullish. So 53K is that top of the range out of well, this little reaccumulation before it ran into its new all-time high. What if Bitcoin doesn't get down there? This comment was fantastic from one of you guys watching and you apparently learnt it from the content. So it gives me a lot of hope that people can understand what it is I'm trying to deliver here. I DCA to the downside and you can see it's like an X percentage at 59. So we got roughly around 59 in the last couple of days. Then you do X plus. So maybe it's 100 bucks here, maybe it's 200 here, maybe it's 300 here and 400 here, whatever it might be. That's what that is explaining. So a percentage, again, you put it to whatever you want. At 56, because that is a particular support level, so maybe you do 56 and a half. 52, 53, we could see it was another support level and then roughly around that sort of mid 40s would be best case, worst case scenario for a drop but then hopefully a recovery from there where you could get probably the cheapest price and Bitcoin still remain in a bullish macro uptrend. That's what we'd be looking at there. And then after the market finds the bottoms, you'd get into some stronger altcoins like Solana, Fetch, Render, and anything else that was going to look similar to the charts that I'm going to go through now and give you that quick step-by-step -step process to have a look at altcoins to avoid and altcoins that you should be getting into. So I think that is, it's such a simple looking plan, but providing it's executed well, then there's nothing wrong with it in my opinion. This is pretty straightforward. So let's take a look back to the charts and this is where Bitcoin sits now. So I put it to you, if Bitcoin doesn't get to 53, at least that uh, plan gets you in at 59, gets you in at 56. And then if it doesn't get here, so be it. That's what happens market moves, starts to move higher. You then have confirmation to the upside and you can start to enter again, knowing that it's a pretty high chance that the low is in because you see confirmation of the low. We still don't have that yet. Uh, and then you can start to enter the position as the market starts to head higher. So in terms of the timing, nothing has changed there. We've talked about that. It's still looking for somewhere in um, May should we see some sort of bottom. We still need to see whether Bitcoin gets rejected again at 67 or does it break through and start to consolidate so it can test some higher prices. The USDT chart shows that we're roughly in about five weeks up from the low here. So this is the USDT dominance showing that uh, money has left crypto and is going back into USDT. So a bit more of a, a safety there, flight to safety, taking some profits. The same thing that happens in the traditional markets when people sell then you know more money goes into USD or whatever fiat currency they're, they're, they're trading in. So looking at some of these bottoms here, the time that it's taken for USDT to reach a peak before it starts to come down. So this one here is April. That was the previous old all-time high before the November top in the previous cycle, 2021. Then you had the November top here right on this beautiful diagonal. That timing there was 10 weeks and then 11 weeks. It doesn't mean that the bottom had to be in at that point, as you know, this was the bear market, but it shows you the change in trend when some of the market, uh, some of the money came out of the USDT and then back into the crypto space to try and take a few little gains on that complacency bounce that happened in March 2022. Okay, so that's what that looks like there. Now you can go there, take this all the way back. You got four weeks up before the change in trend, roughly about three weeks before a small change in trend. Uh, and then eight weeks here, and that was the the bear market. So that's the bear market of 2018. So you've got a few different numbers here, short term, three to four weeks, longer term, eight to 10, 11 weeks. Right now we're at about five. So we've covered the shorter term moves here, whether we see a change in trend, which would mean maybe start to see some more money come back into Bitcoin and cryptos to test this move to the upside. So I've had to bring this up now to explain maybe we're fishing for a bottom. It doesn't mean that that is going to be the bottom. It doesn't mean that this right here is going to be the bottom. We don't have any confirmation yet. Maybe it's just a test. And then we get a failure and come back and test this level. And then we finally start to move higher in the coming weeks or months ahead, as we've looked at with the halving videos and what goes on a few weeks around the halving or a few months actually uh, leading into it and, and coming out of the halving. So that takes me to the altcoin chart and then onto the cryptos. 
Total cryptocurrency market cap, not much has changed since yesterday. Same deal, four weeks down, four weeks down. It looks like there is some sort of bottom forming here at the 50% level. Doesn't mean that we won't see further downside because we did have a bounce that could come back down to roughly 416 billion on the total crypto market cap, excluding Bitcoin, ETH and stable coins because this is a, a TIA chart here. So that's something to keep an eye on, which is signaling, as I've pointed out, now might not be a bad time to start thinking about or edging in to some cryptos and altcoins, just putting it out there. As I said, don't be a, a friggin' idiot and throw everything straight in now because there still could be some downside. And especially if you're getting into the weak cryptos, you definitely don't want to be getting to those. You want to be rotating out of those. Now, here is the example. Don't shoot me. XRP. It's just the easiest example to look at as something that you do not want to be holding. No matter how much uh, garbage is on X, you go on X and everyone loves this XRP or there's a lot of people that post about it and promote it. Uh, I think they mainly just have like Telegram chats because it's such an easy search term for new people coming into the market. So they've got Telegram chats. It, it's, a, it's a bit of a scammy sort of thing just to keep promoting XRP over and over again. This thing goes down. That is a chart you want to avoid it's XRP versus BTC because Bitcoin is going up and XRP is going down. So it's a shithouse investment because you're not even beating Bitcoin. So I've got a couple of charts to show you here. This is XRP. This is XRP USD. This is what the, the masses see. Their price going up. Wow. My altcoin went from 32 cents. Uh, it peaked around sort of 63 or 70 and now it's back down to 50 cents. So they're thinking this thing is a fantastic investment. It's going up. But they don't understand that the risk they're taking is that it's going down against Bitcoin and Bitcoin is less risky than XRP. And when you throw in the Bitcoin chart, you just see how much of a piece of shit XRP is and any other million altcoins that are out there that look like this. I'm going to show you some of the strong stuff, but this is the thing you want to avoid. XRP. Now you've got the XRP uh, chart here in orange. You've got Bitcoin in blue. And Bitcoin's going up while XRP is basically flatlining in orange. Sure, it's got a few little pumps and dumps to get your heart right rushing and you're feeling it in your jellies. But then against Bitcoin value, it's just going straight down. Straight down. It is now 10%, negative 10% away from this low, which was the SEC lawsuit back in 2020. If you did not know about that, the SEC sued XRP and that was the low that it had. How can this thing be so strong if it's coming back to that price against Bitcoin value of it being sued by the SEC. How is it so bad now as it was back then? Think about these things when it comes to your own individual altcoins. And then it's only 35% away from a new all-time low against BTC, which would take you all the way back to like 2017 when I first bought this thing and traded it. Um, here's the logarithmic. Essentially, Bitcoin's gone up. XRP has been flat or a uh, accumulation as they like to call it. Um, and then it's basically been down against BTC value. So anyway, that's enough on XRP. And I know it gets really triggering for some who are emotionally attached to it. But remember the, the saying here, you want to hit it and quit it. If you're in old coins, hit it and quit it. This thing was a quit a very, very long time ago. Now, they can all change. Old coins can change. Uh, trends change. Maybe Ethereum will go into some sort of um, quit it stage in the future, if not already. All right. I'm not married to any of these old coins I'm married to wanting to make profits to then go and enjoy those profits. I hope you want to do the same thing and not get sucked into all of these communities. Render. This is something that looks a little bit stronger. This is Render USD, and hopefully your altcoin is still holding up above its 50%. Now, typically, they're gonna when they do have a pullback, it might be somewhere around 50%, 60%, sometimes even up to 80% down from their highs. Provided you're still in the bull market, it's not the worst thing that could happen to an altcoin, provided we're still in a macro bull. If we're into the bear market, you don't want to touch these things at all. Uh, you could trade them short term, but for the longer term, like you want to hold them for several weeks to several months, probably not the best thing. But my overall view, and you're going to have to make this up for yourself, is that we're still in a macro bull market. So this would be the opportune time to potentially get into some of the stronger stuff. So the first things first, it's above its 50% level. Not bad. Uh, it's only, well, only, it's done about 45% down, somewhere around 52% at the extreme from the top. It's still holding above the uh, accumulation. So there was an accumulation back here, a uh, reaccumulation, and then the breakout. 
with a higher low. So it's still above a lot of this uh, strong or bullish structure before it pumped. Now, typically you'll see it retrace most of the pump because this is where the late majority get in. They're making some gains, you know, it's gone from six to 12 bucks and they're really, really happy. They've done hundred percent, but now they've just lost all of it because it's back down to seven bucks. So you can see it on the chart. This is where the late majority get in. It basically has to wipe those guys out, consolidate again, and then it might have a chance of uh, going up again. So they're the major things there. Now, when I put it against Bitcoin, Bitcoin's chart is doing something relatively similar. So it's keeping pace with Bitcoin, but it's going up more than Bitcoin while Bitcoin is going up. And that is shown here in the orange. So if the orange is going up while the blue is going up, that means that it's going up against Bitcoin while Bitcoin is going up too. So it's it's got strength against Bitcoin. It's going down at the same times or roughly similar times. It's not going to be an exact mirror of um, what's going on there, but you can see that it's moving up along with Bitcoin. So it's going up with the market. So that's something that you want to look out for when it comes to your strong altcoins. So now we've got orange on the chart. That is Solana BTC. I just had to change those over. Uh, it's also going up while Bitcoin was going up in the blue. And now we're starting to come down together at this point. So it's basically following the market. It's uh, going in tune with the macro bull market. And you're seeing gains against Bitcoin while Bitcoin's also going up. So you're taking the risk on an altcoin at the same time you're uh, making bigger gains than Bitcoin. What you don't want to do is what happens with XRP and you take a risk on an altcoin and it's going down while Bitcoin's going up. So avoid those at all costs. Go back and look at all your altcoins right now in your portfolios and start to look for stuff that is looking stronger, holding above 50%, holding above key um, uh, support levels and above accumulation zones and of course the breakout points of uh, higher lows. That's what I got for you in today's video. Thanks for smashing the likes to 4,000 in yesterday's video. Views are a bit down. Share it round. I'll see you guys in the weekend. Maybe a video outside if it's not raining. And until next time, take care and peace out. Oh, and let me know down below if that has been helpful around altcoins. Cheers, guys.